So obviously at the moment, um, we're not in the classroom. Uh, you know, very few people in the classroom. Um, schools are looking at like their key workers and, and students with special needs, those sort of things. So um, I actually, the school I was in on Monday had 20, 24 kids in out of 328. Um, and I'm sure you guys have probably seen seen some similar similar responses if you're still going into the classroom and obviously feel free if you've got any questions guys or if um you know if you if you want to share some more information chuck them down in the questions little chat box and we'll, we'll get through them as we can um but yeah so i mean as we know a lot of the stuff we're doing up now is online and um me and aiden are just going to go through some of the stuff that we've seen um aiden have you did you ever use much of the online tools in your teaching in the past at all yeah, absolutely. So one of my personal favourites, um, particularly when teaching Key Stage 2 maths, was one that's not listed on there. It's called Top Marks. Um, so Top Marks, I'm sure there's probably quite a few of you that have used it before, but uh, if not, I strongly recommend you note it down. It's an outstanding resource, very easy to use. There's a range of really sort of key fundamental topics on there about things like times tables, number bonds, uh, squared numbers, doubling, halving, all the sort of relevant foundational topics that the children will need to master to, to sort of move on to those higher order topics. And it's really well set out. It's very interactive. There's lots of games that they can play on there that become quite competitive amongst themselves. So not sort of causing any arguments in the classroom, but uh, you can do it as group activities as well, where they can compete against each other to see who has the fastest recall of their times tables and number bonds, uh, their squared numbers, everything like that. And it's it's something that really gets children engaged in sharpening up those fundamental skills. So yeah, that's that's a resource I used an enormous amount when I was teaching Key Stage 2 maths. Yeah, that's excellent. And I mean, I know, I know, we, we talk a lot about we're trying to get you know as many uh, as many um, resources we can out there for you guys and, and for our teachers um, that are that are useful across the spectrum. And I know that what we've put together for you this after this evening is we've we've tried to put together things that you know obviously my experience is all in in primary school and Aiden's sort of upper key stages um, into probably a little bit of A level and GCSEs, but um, we've tried yeah. to spread it across as highly as we can. So. Um, I know with what I've been using with the school I'm at at the moment, Seesaw is very much, it's a very good, very good program. I'm really enjoying using it, Aiden, but um, it's it's certainly more, more sort of pushed towards the primary school age group. You can put, uh, I would say it's not necessarily cartoonish, but you can make it a bit more like, you know, kid friendly and primary school age friendly. Um, I've had yep. also had experience in my, in my teaching in Australia, I was in a, in a grade five, six class for, for three and a half years up there. And um, Edmodo and Evernote were two of my favorite things in the world. So um, Edmodo we used to call was like the Facebook for educators, basically. Um, it sort of has that same sort of stream as, as Facebook and, and Twitter and those sort of social media aspects are. And, but it's, it's all about student work and students can comment and, and give each other feedback on their work. And I mean, if you guys go and search up some of these stuff at the end, we'll give you some resources to go and have a look at. Uh, you can, it's very much, you know, you obviously have to go through the safety element of internet stuff as we always do, the cyber safety element we're teaching. Um, having those discussions with those students about, look, please make sure you're not just commenting for the sake of commenting, you know, it's not it's not Facebook, you're not just having a rant on it, it's, it's about your student work. So. Um, yeah, Edmodo, Edmodo is one of my favourites. Um, um, Evernote as well. I don't know, Aiden, have you ever heard of Evernote or used that one before? I, I have to confess I've never used Evernote, so I'm keen to learn about this. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I love Evernote as well. We use this, and I mean, I know most of us, especially in KS2, I'm not quite sure as much in, in secondary, um, but for, for sort of the, the lower key stages, um, obviously your portfolios you put together for students and I remember when I was a kid Aiden and you might be the same it was very much a um, just a, a big old folder full of your stuff that you oh, yes. packed more and <laughs> oh, yes. into yeah, as yeah. you went along. <laughs> oh and, yes. Yeah we, we all know these days of getting to, to where we are now that having stuff online is so much more beneficial it's not you yeah. don't have these oh, yeah. swaths of things and um, Evernote basically is it's a it's a, a resource that I actually use personally and used to use professionally as well. And it's kind of like, you know, we've all got Samsung Notes or uh, I'm a Samsung user, which probably an Android user, which which tells you a little bit about me as well, everyone. But um, Apple, I'm not sure what Apple Notes equivalent is. Are you a Samsung user? I'm not going to remember. I, I, I do have a Samsung. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But I, I don't know what app, app, whatever you guys use Apple, if you've got yeah, Apple, yeah, 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 function, yeah. But, Samsung users, yeah, aren't quite as yeah. knowledgeable on that. Not, not quite as not quite as with it, but I mean Evernote Evernote's fantastic because you can put your notes in. But what you can do is we used to put our students uh, our students' work they put up. We could then access it from our own devices, annotate their work for them. Then they could respond with their own annotation as well. So 
what we would do is we basically build these portfolios at the end of the year with a, with constant annotation for each unit of work. So if we were doing, I know Aidan, you're going to talk a little about some of the science experiments you've done a bit later. Yeah. Um, if we were doing a science experiment, the kids would be able to take a photo of what they had produced and you know maybe a video of, of some of the stuff they put together. And then with using Evernote, they could then annotate and put captions and sort of say, oh look, you know, I've this is this is me and and Timmy um, building a. a, a a Mentos and Diet Coke fueled rocket car, and yeah. then they show the video, something like that. So that those two together, Red Moto and Evernote, were probably two of my my favourite um, online resources I've ever used. Uh, very very useful, and as I mentioned, they're they're more to find towards those middle key stages. Probably probably a bit too high tech for the juniors, and I mean. Upper, upper key stages, like key stage three, four, five, you could definitely use them, but you probably have to make them a bit more, uh, a bit, bit more, a uh, bit more interesting to those students. But very, very useful overall, I would suggest. The, the ability to, uh, to, to to take photos of the experiments that you're doing, to be able to annotate it, to be able to really reflect upon what you're doing is simply outstanding. And and, and admittedly, was not something that I ever utilised when I was teaching. We did some outstanding experiments that were really fun and engaging. But uh, that ability to really sort of recall it in a very practical way um, is just outstanding. So yeah, that's a that's definitely a great shout there, Lockie.